Hey classes, welcome back. Going to get a little mathy on you today, but nothing too, too bad. But if you check out the board behind me, we're going to jump into a little bit about the coordinate system, the way that we're going to use it across the hall in your math classes, and the way that we use it in here to see if there's a connection between a couple variables, like for example, the height from which we dropped a golf ball and the height to which it bounced, and hopefully bring together what we've been doing over the last couple of days, hopefully bring together golf balls bouncing in the classroom and the age and size of our universe. So there's a wild connection for you. Let's see if we can bring those two things together pretty quickly right here. Okay, first of all, with the coordinate system, this will hopefully reiterate and go through a little bit of what you've seen over in your math classes. You've got your four quadrants on a coordinate system. Traditionally, we number them with Roman numerals starting in the upper right, one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna go through this part fairly quickly because we're gonna have lots of time to practice this in class. And we did a couple of ordered pairs. It's kind of like when you're playing, say something like Battleship. A long time ago, my brother and I were stuck home. We both had chicken pox at the same time. Yes, I'm that old. My daughter always gives me a bad time. She's like, you got chicken pox? She had the black death too. I'm like, no, I'm not that old kid. But my brother and I were stuck home at the same time Getting over the chicken pox, I remember that was when my brother, one, taught me chess, and two, uh, we played a lot of Battleship, killing some time there after uh, doing our homework. And both of those, chess and Battleship, involved a coordinate system, you know, going across uh, grids and graphs. For example, Battleship, like, you know, B12 or something like that. You go to the B, you go over 12 units, and then you guess to see if somebody's ship is on the board there. Uh, chessboard, same way. You've got the, the, the chessboard going um, in, a, in a pattern where nowadays, especially, they number, it used to be you know king to rook three, but now it's uh, uh, a system where you go A6 and B4, they have them all numbered in a grid. Coordinate systems just like that. We use ordered pairs, the first number being the X, the next number being the Y, and what you're doing really is just finding all points on a plane. Uh, we are just worrying about the X and Y. If you do an X, Y, and Z, you've got another um, number line coming out at you or into the board. But really, we're just trying to plot points on a graph. This is what we did with our golf ball bounce uh, experiment. We took a golf ball, we bounced it from three heights, 50 centimeters, 100 centimeters, and uh, se uh, 75 centimeters, and we want to see to the height to which it bounced. And I'll show you in a second what our results were on that. Also, moving on here, we had a couple formulas, a few more formulas to throw in. One is a rectangular prism, a uh, fancy way for saying just a, a regular object that's got all right angle sides, six sides, all right angles there. Um, the volume for a sphere, and we're going to use that a couple times in class when we do, for example, planets, when we do um, baseballs in here, we do a little mini unit on baseball. We also do a little mini unit on golf, which is an awesome game, also taught to me by my, by my brother and my dad. And if you look at this right here, you've got volume equals four-thirds pi r cubed. And if that seems complicated, trust me it's not. I want to show you a nice way of dealing with formulas like that and how we punch in the numbers. Okay, one thing at a time. Let's go first with the coordinate system and how we used it, and then we'll pop on by and show you what we get with one of our experiments in class today when we get the volume. So I'm tethered to my computer again with my little wire here so I can be heard. So let me pull up our results from our golf ball bounce experiment. Basically, we collected on the blackboard at the back of the room. Let's see if we get that centered there. Uh, some of the students' data, we use first period data for most of the classes today just because they were the first class through. We put it up on the board. And there's a lot of important things going on here. One, as you put the variable down here, which was the independent variable, always listed on the x-axis, we chose the height from which to uh, drop those golf balls. I always think of the independent variable as you have the independence to choose um, what it is that you're going to be changing this experiment. In this case, we have the independence of choosing what height to drop from. Yes, I gave the students the height, but I could have picked different heights. Next time, they will pick different heights. But we used uh, 50, 75, 100. And you see these clusters that happened um, at different places. The black dots were put up there because we were talking about what would happen if the data didn't match up. Um, I didn't erase those, but pretty much we had a nice cluster in each spot that showed that pretty much you could predict 
the height to which the golf ball would bounce if you knew the height from which you dropped it. Um, the dependent variable, this variable, I always thought about like this, depends on this one. In other words, if there is a connection, if there's a connection between the independent and the dependent variable, what you notice is the dots, the data points, make almost a line. Not a perfect straight line. It's almost never a perfect straight line, but it's uh, close. You can show that there's probably a relationship between the two variables. It's not always the case. For example, we gave the example of how much sleep a student gets versus their grade point average. And we gave a made up data in that case, but that's what the black dots were when they were scattered all over the place. When the dots, the data points again, are scattered all over the place, that means there's not necessarily a connection between the independent variable and the dependent variable. Uh, this also related to, I'll use my lightsaber as a pointer this time, the Hubble constant. When you looked at the data that we get when you're trying to start off the class with a really big idea, you know, the age of the universe, the size of the universe, things like that. Hubble, about 100 years ago, realized when they started plotting the distance of a galaxy versus the, the speed with which it's uh, moving away from our galaxy, uh, they realized pretty quickly that as you went further out into space, the galaxies are moving faster and faster away from us. Uh, this was a huge piece of evidence, uh, not only for the Big Bang, but when you're looking at the expansion of the universe, the idea that as things are further away, you're looking back into time, you're seeing things move uh, at a rate, uh, ever increasing rate as you look deeper into space. Uh, one of the exciting things that I believe I mentioned on a previous video and also in our notes too, was the discovery around 1998 that the acceleration of the universe, it, th that the expansion of the universe seems to be accelerating, which is a huge breakthrough in astronomy. It really changes our idea about how our universe works. Those are the exciting points. The James Webb Space Telescope will likely push the number of visible galaxies out to about 200 billion pretty soon, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so that was how we related something as simple as a golf ball balance experiment in our class to something really huge, like doesn't get huger than our entire universe expanding. Um, in class, we took a little bit of time to practice with a little bit of math. We got the volume of a Jenga block, just a little square block, length times width times height. Then we get, did the uh, volume of a softball and a golf ball. Now here's the golf ball right here. I'll use the softball as an example in just a second. We never did get to this Bill Nye clip today, a little bit too busy there. But on the softball, when we're doing, and again, let me switch to a blank whiteboard here for just a second. We're going to be using formulas occasionally in this class, and again, when we're looking at the math, the formula is like our map. And so we start off with the volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. This gave us an opportunity, especially with the r cubed here, to see an exponent. We talked about exponents. We talked a little bit about scientific notation the other day, a way of dealing with base 10 numbers that are very, very large, huge values, or very small values. You know, when other, in other words, when there's a lot of zeros after a decimal point. When we look at our map, our first step is one, write the formula, and two, let's write in what we know. In other words, 4 thirds, a constant, it's given to us right here. Pi, my experience, we've almost never, I don't believe we've ever used anything other than 3.14 is a good approximation for pi. I had been a computer programmer years ago and literally my first program that I wrote when I worked at Chevron Corporation involved the very first day figuring out the radius around gas stations when we were trying to figure out the distance to the nearest places where they would get their tanks refilled with gasoline. And we use pi to figure out that radius where a truck would come from. We use 3.14. I know that obviously, you know, your calculator will throw in lots of places past 3.14, but really, as a practical example, you never really need anything past that. So we put in 3.14. Now, I personally encourage writing uh, the numbers, uh, in other words, turning them into rational numbers, putting uh, a number like this over one, I'll show you why in just a second. I just think it makes it very, very easy. And then finally, the R3, that's the radius, half the distance across our softball. And when we took our 
softball like this, we had six of them in class for our six groups. And they had large meter sticks. I'm using my ruler right here when you use a ruler and a softball. We've got approximately 10 centimeters for the diameter of our softball. So if you have a softball like this, it's about 10 centimeters roughly from uh, the distance, you know, from where we had it sitting on the table to the top. So that means a radius of five. So let's write that in. We have five centimeters over one. And we put a little three exponent there at the end. Again, if you can see this on the whiteboard right there, um, writing it out like this makes it very, very easy when it comes time to pulling out the calculators. By the time you pull out the calculator, your math is done. I always kind of think of the calculator as this, this isn't really the math. This is just punching in the numbers. So when you punch this in right here, I have the light shine on the board because this is one of those solar powered calculators. But if you just go across four times 3.14 times five times five times five, we get 1,570 and then divide by three, divided by three. Our number is approximately equal to, so I'm going to use this as approximately equal to 523, 5. 23.3 centimeters cu uh, cubed. Now it's important to write in that the centimeters are cubed. Remember centimeters to the third power. Sometimes students, when we're just learning this stuff, will just put it in, in centimeters afterwards, or sometimes they'll lop off that completely and say, well, I get a number. Afraid not. You have to have in science units, and we're gonna have a lot of time to practice with that. If I went a little bit fast, you can pause it, you can go back and play it again. I try and keep these videos to about 10 minutes. But basically, the long and the short of it, when we're using a formula, write down the formula first, write in what you know. The formula is like your roadmap on where you're going. Writing in the numbers is, that's the math part. And by the time you get to the part where you're punching in a calculator, well, that's easy. You're just punching in the values. And there'll be times later on where, we, where we'll be doing cross canceling of units, uh, we'll be doing uh, a little bit of a simplification before we get to the multiplication part, but in this one, it was fairly straightforward. So, a uh, quick video relating everything from golf balls bouncing in the classroom to the size and age of our universe, which we've been talking about with Hubble's Law as things go uh, further into space, they're moving faster and faster, and a little bit of math practice using formulas. Hope that wasn't too much for one video, but we'll see you back here next time. Have a good day.